my friends, this is Ree doing a Tea with Ree special. I haven't done one of these in a while. I've been busy trying to add things to my store and dealing with my own issues. The cold weather has come back and that means my muscles are sore, but um, I'm dealing with it. And uh, today I am drinking um, Body Ease Tea. This is something that I carry in my store. Um, this has white willow bark. Um, actually, oh, it's, yes, peppermint, chamomile, white willow bark, skullcap, lemon verbena, um, and it, it is good for easing body aches and pain. Um, it also fights inflammation. Uh, peppermint is known for cooling the body, which uh, can ease pain. So, um, I have known, I have noticed when I drink this tea, it does seem to help me. Um, so anything that does that, I add that to my toolbox. Um, so whatever that does, whatever information that can provide to you, if that's something you think that could help you, um, you can find it at angelmessenger.net in our home goods section. We have a few different teas on there by the same maker and some cute coffee mugs as well, or tea mugs. Um, so check that out. Um, this thing I actually got from Amazon. I've shown this before, but it's got a little... Um, I don't want my tea to fall out there, but it's got this little um, capsule thing in here that you can put your tea in, um, and there's a little handle to pull it out, and um, I can put a link in there, because this thing is really cool. It uh, keeps your stuff hot for a long time, so anyway, that's um, that information, um, but I have some really important information that I need to um, give to you and I actually meant to do this on something else and my computer froze up and that information is not available to me so um, Spirit is kind of telling me I need to give this information and um, not put it off any longer so um, oh, but actually one thing I wanted to show you really quick I did a video on these cute purses the other day and I went to put them away in their storage place and I noticed they actually have really nice cushioned handles and so I wanted to show you guys that um, these the description when I put them online said they'd be great um, for diaper bags or book bags and I agree because um, I have little arms and little shoulders and everything falls off my shoulder and hurts my shoulder which is why I have back problems probably but um, this is nice I love it so I wanted to tell you that um, something else good about those bags but anyway Something that I have sort of talked about, well, I have talked a lot about how um, I work with goddess energy, and I work with god energy too. Um, I believe the divine is both masculine and feminine, and long before the world went all patriarchy, the world worshipped the goddess. Um, all religions at one time worshipped the goddess. And then the patriarchy came along and told everybody the goddess was evil. And if you look back on the history of that, you'll find that many of our holidays currently were laid over top of um, goddess holidays. And, uh, well, that's a whole other story. I could get off topic on that quite easily. But I worked quite a bit with the goddess, and especially over the last six years, I worked a lot with Native American energy. Um, and especially the Lakota goddess, uh, white buffalo calf woman, um, and the Sioux grandmothers. And I haven't updated this on my website yet, but I found out about a month ago, I think. It, I really had to go through um, like a period of mourning with this because I was really upset. But. Um, I don't know how you mistake this information, but I'm just going to let it go. Um, I was told that we actually are not Native American. Um, I don't know how they had this picture of me that looks Native American from when I was born. Maybe I'm secretly adopted. I have no idea. So um, I actually talked to a really nice person on my Facebook page about it. I can't remember her name, but thank you to you. Uh, I can't remember your name. I, my, my brain sometimes totally loses information. But um, the people that I thought had Native American ancestry, my grandfather, um, 
his father was supposedly 100% Native American, but apparently he was Dutch and um, also he had a, a mother who, somewhere along the line, um, they were Irish as well, which now explains where I got the connection to Brigid, which I wondered my whole life how I, well, for years since I figured out that it was her um, that saved me. Um, I wondered how I had that connection. It made no sense to me, but I guess now it does. But I really was devastated that, you know, I've been telling people that I have this Native American heritage and I had this deep connection with the Sioux grandmothers and with um, the Lakota goddess. And I really had this, I, I can only describe it as a profound connection to her. I, it's not the same connection I had with Brigid or Athena it wasn't quite that profound, um, but it was still a connection. And I was really upset. Um, and so I still struggled with how to word it and I'm, I'm still not sure how to word it. And, but I'm gonna, I'm still, I'm, as you can tell, I'm struggling with how to speak right now. Um, but I guess I'm gonna link to this video in my about section and try to explain it now. Um, I, I prayed about it and talked to my ancestors and I, I have, I have a guide who calls himself grandfather and, um, I believe he's Navajo and I don't know how I got him. Um, but I also have a connection with Sioux grandmothers and maybe I built that connection with the work that I've done over the last six years. Um, I work deeply with the elements and the circles that I make um, to do my work in. I do it in the, the directions of the Native American way. I don't do it in the wicked way. It just d didn't feel right to me that Native American way did. So I think I built that connection. And um, when I prayed about it, the, the Native American, the, the Sioux grandmothers said to me, um, if you had a foster child, would you love them any less? And I said that it's, it's I don't know how, but I might love them more because I have foster children in my life and knowing the things that they have been through Um, knowing the things that they have been through almost makes me love them more because I want to protect them, put a shield around them and fight off everyone that ever hurt them, basically. <laughs> so essentially, that's what they told me, how they feel about me. Um, that I'm still their child, even though I found this out about myself, that I still have that connection. They are my ancestors. So I know that there are some that will be upset that I feel that way. Um, but if you read the about section on my site, even when I did, even when I thought that I really was Native American, I said, and still do believe this, that now is the time for the teachers to rise for the Native Americans to teach their wisdom and not just keep it for themselves. I know that the horrible things that white people did to Native Americans, it's unforgivable. Um, things that people did to the Romani are unforgivable. They're being done now. I mean, there are horrible things being done to Romani in Italy. While in Europe, some Romani are idolized like they are um, uh, famous people. Like they're, they treat their witches like they are um, um, like famous actors and stuff. So it, it's interesting. But I guess what I'm saying is it's time for the warriors in every race to rise and to be the light in the world and to work together. And I have a connection to Native Americans that may not be blood, but it's important. And I've been given a message that also comes in a way that may make people upset. 
but it started in a way that made me really upset. Um, when the information started coming out about the, the children that were buried, murdered and buried, I was devastated. Um, obviously most people with a heart were devastated. Um, I have talked about how I have prophetic dreams and I haven't had one since this dream and I, I, I think it's only because I haven't finished what I was supposed to. And so this video is supposed to finish, I believe, what I was supposed to do. Part of it, um, I will say, had to do with uh, Britney Spears and the Olympics. It's hard to explain, but I did two different ceremonies, one privately with some colleagues and a friend um, over Zoom, and then one in my home with some friends and family. Um, but essentially, I was shown that Brittany was being abused and hurt and it was actually a an affront to the feminine on the national stage and the feminine I've, I've talked about this a lot but the feminine is supposed to rise it's and it's not just in women it's in men the feminine needs to heal in a way that can bring love to the world and in this instance, this was an opportunity for the feminine to either be healed with love or to be tormented. And that couldn't be, that, that needed to change or there was going to be, the balance was not gonna be kept and something else bad was gonna happen at the Olympics. And, and I'm not even gonna talk about it because most of you could probably guess what it was going to be, but I'm not going to put any energy there because I already stopped it and I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But you can see the results of what's happened with Brittany and how many people have supported her and loved her. <laughs> it's amazing the people, the people that have come out in support of her and, um, she has her, ch her challenges and she's, none of us are perfect. Um, but no one should be treated like a prisoner. And I think the result was really beautiful. But there was another part of that dream. Um, and I think it was the beginning of the dream and I've had that part separately recurring, I believe. Um, and it was confusing. It took me a while to figure out and that this part is related to the children. I saw children in this dark place. It looked like a cavern. I thought it was underground, but it was, it was like a big space. They were sitting in chairs kind of spread out and there were other adults there standing looking at them but there was a woman and there was someone with her and she was walking around asking the kids if they recognized the person in the image and it was a picture of me <coughs> excuse me it was a picture of me that had been taken from one of my videos and I'm pretty sure I know which one it was. It was a video that um, I looked weird in. I had noticed in the video that it looked like there was almost something superimposed over me. And um, so she'd take, she had taken this picture and asked some of the kids and they almost just looked comatose. Like they were awake, asleep awake and their eyes looked weird. And she asked this one boy, and um, his voice, like he had a different 
dialect. His voice was weird and his eyes were weird. Um, he said something about a gift, a gift. Like he couldn't, like it didn't, he didn't say it right. I thought at first it was like a, a like a gaff, like, like, you know, like it's a joke or like a bad thing. Um, but then I kept hearing it and he was saying gift and like, it's supposed to be, I don't know, like there's other people that know this and I've tried to talk about what I'm about to tell you. Um, the children, I've talked to some of the children many of them will be coming back. Some of them have already. They found peace long before their bodies were found. But some of them, some of them didn't know they were lost. That's the only way I know how to explain it. Um, the ceremonies that the families did were very healing. Um, I did a ceremony on Halloween um, because there are so many confused and lost spirits from the rapid deaths of COVID. And um, the purpose, the purpose of my work is to try to raise the vibration of the world so that so many bad things aren't happening. Um, the children wanted to help. They wanted to help do that. And they did. Some of them will be coming to my family. Um, but they, they will be coming because they, they said that I'm right about what I have said. Essentially, the, the rainbow prophecy that everybody says is not true. Um, that's what they're telling me, that, uh, that it's time for things to change. So, I, uh, I hear guidance through music a lot. And I put energy into the world through music a lot. And sometimes um, it takes a lot of effort for guidance to get through to me. <laughs> so it's, I'm slow sometimes. Um, I've been wanting to do something um, like a spiritual program for kids. And I was very sad that I haven't been able to make it work because of finances. Um, it's, it needs more than I have space for and it, it anyway, there's more to it. Um, but I realized that what I was being told is I need to do something like that for adults. So this is kind of the only, well, there are other ideas, but this is the one that has worked out first. So um, there's this, this song by Ellie Goulding called Burn. And she talks about lights in the world and that actually kind of reminds me of the song um, by Miranda Lambert um, that I love um, about fireflies and I can't remember the song now, but um, being the keep keeper of the flame. So um, maybe I need to move this back a little. So um, these are gold rings and each of these gold rings can kind of, let me see how I can make this happen here. Well, let's start with one. So one gold ring is a person Oops. that hopefully doesn't get dropped. Sometimes we do get dropped though, right? And we have to figure out our pain and heal it ourselves. And um, so there are people that I know 
who don't know each other, but who I can see are part of the same soulmate family. So I have a friend who is connected on the same soulmate connection path as my aunt, who is connected to another uncle and another part of my family. Okay, so there are three connected in the same soul line. The same soul line, so you know that as one person you connect to your higher self, but what if your soul can exist in multiple places in the world at the same time? What if your soul exists in three places? And if you connect with those three people, you can see who they are, the struggles they encounter. And by seeing who they are and the struggles they encounter, their challenges, their differences, you can heal yourself. And that's kind of hard to explain without giving you exact examples, but just trust me, okay? So let's say a baby is born in that same line, okay? Now let's say you meet a stranger, someone on my Facebook fan list, whatever, ends up being part of that soulmate family. And then say somebody's sister-in-law, whatever, ends up being part of that same family. Let's say there are six parts of your soul living at a time. You can create this ball of light. Okay, I've had this idea, and I keep thinking about it, and like, I can't explain this to people. They're going to think I'm nuts. And then my guides keep showing me this song, Burn, by Ellie Goulding. And part of the song, they have these balls of light that they pretty much plant on the earth. And you see in the end, there's all these balls of light. And they talk about how they're going to be seen from outer space because there's so many balls of light in the world. And then I was just in the shower singing this song. And I was like, oh, duh. <laughs> um, it's... There's more to it than that, but I think, unfortunately, some of these people think they need to compete with each other. It's part of the reason that, unfortunately, some of the mothers in my family can't love their children, because they think they have to compete with their counterparts, which is not true. They need to love their counterparts. They need to see the other parts of themselves, the mirrors, the challenges, and find a way to love them, to love all the parts of themselves, to raise them to gold. To a halo. This has been an episode of Tea with Three. Thank you. I hope you'll visit my website at angelmessenger.net and check out my store. And um, I hope you have a blessed day. Take care.